All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Let's start off on the state of the nation here. And Professor Aman Manyora is with us, political commentator. Honorable Sam Atand is also with us. Alego Songa, member of parliament. Honorable John Kagushi, I'm Gruini MP, is running slightly late. There's a lot of rain earlier on today. So he'll make it to studio as soon as he comes in. We'll drop him into the conversation. So, but members of the National Assembly had a heated debate last evening and actually to the afternoon as a as a meal of more one kenya alliance demonstrations that took place on monday so kenya kwanza mp said that the demonstrations are political and economic sabotage but on the other hand as a new legislator slammed the police response terming their actions of dispersing the demonstrators as ungodly this is how it went down in parliament listen my appeal and my request is that the individuals who organized the individuals who led, which is in this case the leaders of a Simeo party, should be held responsible to pay for the damages. Because if this continues on a weekly basis, Mr. Speaker, <coughs> it will bring this country to a standstill. And as such, as responsible leaders, then measures has to be put in place to make sure that Nobody wakes up one morning just because they lost an election and say, I'm going to go to demonstration. The leader of the opposition, the Honorable Raila Odinga, with all due respect to him, pretends to be a Democrat, but he is nothing short of an economic terrorist and an urban bandit, terrorizing Kenyans. Terrorizing Kenyans, Mr. Speaker. And we want to tell him, this behavior shall come to an end. Order. It has Order. been there before, Order. Honorable Speaker, Order. and it will come Order. to an end, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, Order. Order. Honorable members, can you wait for me to give you your point of order? Mashimiwa, uh, MP Fonyando, if you stand on your feet. Order. 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 Honorable members, honorable members, when you ask for a point of order, you give an opportunity to the speaker. O order. Rosa, order. You give an opportunity for the, me for the chair to notice you and to give that a chance. Me honorable Opia Wandai, please sit down until you are given the point of order, unless you are addressing a gallery outside this house. Order. The MP, the MP for Nyando, please, you will remain out of the house for the remainder of the day. Because I am on, on, you will remain out of the house for the... The Speaker, you know, this house is uh, fast generating into what I would want to call very, very latently as a kangaroo institution. Mr. Speaker, we have been told many times, and there has been a, a tradition in this house, that you don't impute improper motive on a person who has got no capacity or opportunity to defend themselves in this, in this house. Regardless of what personal Order, issues... Honor raise, the, raise I'm, the point I'm raising order. it, Mr. Speaker. Raise what is the hurry, Mr. Speaker? Regardless of what personal issues Honorable Chungwa might be harboring against uh, Honorable Uru Kenyatta and that Honorable Raila Mulodinga. Is it in order, Mr. Speaker, that Honorable Chungwa, Chungwa would refer to Honorable Raila Mulodinga as an urban terrorist, Mr. Speaker? Is that in order? Is that in order? Is that in order? Can you rule him out of order and ask him to withdraw and apologize? Yeah, thank you. I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving this house direction. That it is actually wrong for us to be mentioning other people who are not here and giving them, calling them names, like regrettably my good friend, Honorable Chungwa, called Honorable Raila an urban terrorist. Mr. Speaker, if it weren't for your order, I could also have called Honorable Ruto national terrorist. But because of your order, I'm not calling him a national terrorist, Mr. Speaker. And finally, Mr. Speaker, finally, Mr. Speaker, I want to say that my good friend Honorable Ichungwa must tell us whether he's also of the LGBTQ community because of his preoccupation with Uru Mugai Kenyatta. That guy is a man, Buana. Don't be too preoccupied with order, Honorable order, Uru Mugai order. Kenyatta. Mr. Speaker, the motion before us today is worried about nothing else but money. Yes. But the demonstrations were not just worried about money. The demonstrations are about people. 
People who sleep hungry days on end. People who are lied to during campaigns that they would have pockets full of money and they would have tables full of food as soon as the new regime came into power. Only to discover that they sleep hungry every day. Those are the people who are out on the streets. Mr. Speaker, the demonstrations that you saw yesterday were about Kenyans. Kenyans asking for equitable distribution of opportunities within government amongst 42 tribes of this country so that not only two tribes get involved or get employed within those opportunities. What's your point about Prof, I'll start with you on this. Is this economic terrorism or a quest to stabilize the economy, in your view? Uh, I think uh, uh, it is neither. It can all be economic terrorism. Where, where will it be coming from? Of course, leaders are only terrorizing the, their citizens by imposing hardship through taxes, uh, through unreasonable levies. That you can call terrorism if you wish. But really, on the other side, if there is a group that is trying to, to press for changes, uh, which changes would see the common man perhaps breathe easier a bit, again, that can all be called terrorism. So I think one side is pushing to have things work in the country. The other side is adamant. And I think neither side is, uh, is terrorist. Yeah. Yes. But are they going about it the right way? On both sides? You know, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, under normal circumstances, you would expect seasoned politicians like Raila and Ruto to sit down and sort out problems that are in the country. Because there are many problems in the country. There are many challenges. Some of them are beyond us as a people. But they should sit down and talk. But we all know, you and I know, that people in power rarely listen until they are pushed. So perhaps Rail understanding that uh, the government would not listen, uh, he has undertaken to push government. If you ask me, that's the wrong way. The right way would be for people to sit down. Because this pushing, unfortunately, can lead us into losing a country that I say is too good to go down. Today we woken up. Of course, Nairobi is flooded. But we still love our country, and we are here. Tomorrow you could wake up and find there's no country. And therefore, that approach to me is the wrong approach. Okay. Ruto must come down, Raila must come down, and the two gentlemen ought to sit down and resolve whatever differences there are in the country. Okay. Yeah. Atandi, those, your critics call you economic saboteurs because of what we saw during the protests, some damages here and there, business stalled, loss of uh, a lot of revenue coming through to business. Do you accept that tagging? Of, definitely, I can't. I, I, am a, I participated. I, I, got, I was part, one of the mobilizers of the Monday demonstrations. And I also participated because I was, I was at KCC, I was at the city center, and I was not armed. Uh, I, 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 I was part of a team of leaders who were in town to demonstrate and to picket. But Trevor, the first question that one should ask is, are we acting outside the law? Does the law allow us to engage in picketing and, and to engage in demonstrations? Yes, the law allows us. So then, why, how, how does it, are we armed when we are demonstrating? We, don't, we are not armed. So according to us, we, we are the majority. The Azimio side, we are the majority. We have more people, we, were, we got more votes than the people who are holding the instruments of power. So we are exercising our rights as the majority. The people who are controlling the system are the minority. So we are, we are doing what we are supposed to do as far as uh, the law allows us. And lastly, Trevor, the, we are actually protesting against economic terrorists. The people holding instruments of state are the economic terrorists, firstly because of the kind of uh, policies they are putting for us, the, the, the tax regime that they are inflicting on us, I would call the kind of tax regime that is inflicting, inflicting on Kenyans as part of economic terrorism. Yeah. Also, the fact that 
the regime in town is unable to feed Kenyans. You know, when you deny Kenyan, when you can't feed your citizen, you are, you are actually killing them. So you are a terrorist. So actually, this reference of economic terrorism actually applies to the people holding instruments of state. But the government says there are attempts to elevate the rising cost of living. 43,000 metric tons of rice has already been brought in. 1,305 tons of uh, maize has also been brought in. So there are attempts. They're just saying that you're not patient enough to wait for them to elevate the rising cost of living. There are attempts. But they are, they are, they, they, what is happening are just uh, knee-jerk reactions to our protests. There's nothing serious. Do you think we have a serious government? Even, even Trevor, where you sit, just be fair. Do you think these people know what they're doing? Eh? They don't know. They are, actually, they're incompetent. These are incompetent fellows who have happened to get into leadership without any plan. For six months, seven months, they are, they are still attempting. Trevor, we were here last, last time and we, we discussed and we were making comparisons between President Kibaki when he took over power. He took over a battered economy, economy which was actually worse than ever. But he was not complaining about President Moi. He, he went into work, and immediately he took over power. There was free, free primary education. These guys are in, are, are in office for seven months, and they are complaining more than even the previous regime. So we are talking about an incompetent regime which is in power illegally, which we need to remove. And I've said, I told you here that our mission is complete overhaul of this system so that we can have a system that is responsive to the needs and welfare of Kenyans. All right. Honorable John Kagusha is now joining us, Mkuruini, Member of Parliament, and I see him smiling at the corner there. <laughs> Kagusha, why is your side referring to this as economic sabotage and yet protests are legal in the Constitution? Mm -hmm. uh, my friend here at Andy has said that uh, they are picketing because the law allows them to picket. And, uh, I, but I also want to inform him, the law does not ask them to picket. And the law does not ask them to do mass action. Mass action is a tool that uh, should be a tool of last result. If you're in a country where uh, nobody is listening to you, nobody cares, and nobody is doing anything about whatever complaints you have, and where you have a regime like what he's attempting to, to, to describe, uh, at that point in time, you can have mass action as a, as a, as a last resort. Uh, but you cannot have uh, picketing and mass action uh, against a regime that is barely in power. Immediately when this uh, regime came into power, uh, within uh, the first six months already we had started hearing the calls of uh, mass action uh, from the opposition. And uh, to make it worse, this mass action, as he has clearly put it, they want to overhaul the government. They want to change the system. Apparently, uh, the opposition doesn't like uh, the government that is being formed. You know, it's in the process of being formed. And uh, already they have made their decision that uh, this government is not right. And, and of course, why you're seeing Atandi uh, talking the way he's talking, meekly, humbly, and uh, you know, in a way to suggest that uh, he doesn't believe in what he's saying. He knows uh, that um, uh, his candidate, Raila Odinga, vied for an election that many people have said he never wanted to win. The gentleman was uh, lazing around. He was relaxed, he was easy. Why? Because in the election that uh, uh, they were contesting last year, he had been promised that uh, there are other powers that usually operate behind the scenes that make people presidents in Kenya. And, and uh, William Samoy Ruto, every day, he told them, you're joking. If you want to get votes, you must go to the people. Did they go to the people? Did Raila Odinga come, come to Nyeri? And yet, he was promised 50% in Nyeri. But he never came there. He never bothered. He never showed up. He never got any, 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 any agents. He never did anything. So the guy relaxed. Now, after losing an election, in a rather very embarrassing manner, uh, he now wants to change the regime by mass action. It's unfair. It's not right. And uh, it's the wrong approach. By the way, if uh, mass action was anything 
opposition wanted to use. They would even have given this government some time, maybe like two years. Then after two years, say, these people are not willing to fix the economy. But you cannot do mass action against a government yeah. that has already brought down the cost of unga from 230 to 190, okay. and in some cases, even to 170. All right. you, cannot <laughs> do, you cannot do mass action against a government when the dollar has gotten so strong again is a shilling, a president who is not sleeping, working, and uh, actually overworking, has already done an arrangement okay. with other foreign powers on our issues of import of, um, of, 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 of uh, oil. And this, in essence, yeah. has helped the country now to, to, to start reducing mm. the cost of uh, dollar against the shilling. Okay. Now, or the cost of shilling against the dollar. Now, this is someone who is really seriously interested to ensure that he fixes the problems of this country. Okay. And, 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 and uh, what, we, what we are clearly seeing from ODM side, they want to be a distraction. It is something that is, uh, is, is, is predictable. It's known. It's a pattern. We knew that Raila Odinga would dispute the election if he loses the election. Okay. And we also knew that he will now try and uh, push other... Uh, other actors okay. who sometimes are actually more sympathetic to him to start calling for dialogue. All right. and, and you know, in this case, dialogue, by the way, it actually means encouraging impunity. Okay. In, in fact, we'll, we'll get into the dialogue conversation in just a bit. I have to take a commercial break. When we come back on the front page, let me bring your attention to the front page of the standard. There are some options out of this. Atandi, I know you wanted some right Trevor, of response. I, Trevor, I have to take a commercial break. Don't I'll allow be, him to get away. I will give you a right with, of response uh, Atandi, right after this break. All right. And go also keep your views coming at Trevor on Bidget Series and TV. Can you use the hashtag daybreak? I'll give you a chance of responding. And then on the front page of the standard, there are some four options there. We'll explore them one at a time. See which one works. All right. See you in just a bit. Thank <laughs> you.